<laughs> Hi guys! Hi. Today we're at La Salle right now and we are going to WH. But first, let's buy some food and then we'll chill and we'll answer some questions, okay? Okay, see you later! Hey guys! Here's our math vlog and subscribe to see more videos of us and if you have any suggestions, comment them down below. So, we're gonna play our topic is about mathematics and finance. So we're gonna play bato bato topic. So here's the mechanics. Whoever wins um, will answer the question. Okay. Bato bato topic. <laughs> okay. okay. Tell me the question. Okay. Why is money management everybody's business? Um, I think money management is everybody's business because we spend in our daily lives, and I think. Um, as students, um, I should keep and track my expenses because um, I'm away from my parents so I don't kind of know how to budget my money that much yet but I'm, I think I'm capable of doing them but through this topic. Let's play again. Okay, question. <laughs> Okay, how can mathematics be used to gain financial literacy and profitability? I think that mathematics can be used to gain financial literacy and profitability to how you can do your taxes and like invest in businesses, especially right now. Um, after graduating, you have to like know what you want to do, um, know how you can earn money because if um, it will be hard if you don't have any work after. Like, like you can start a small business and know how to uh, like um, uh, pay the bills yeah. and manage your finances. Okay. Okay. What are your views in learning the concepts discussed in this topic? Are the concepts too easy or too difficult to understand? Um, since I'm a CLA student, it's kind of difficult to understand for me um, this topic because I know that I'm not in, um, inclined in mathematics. But my view in this topic, it's I think it's practical for us. Actually, even if you're a math major or not, um, it's practical for us to learn um, even the simplest dynamics of this course because um, it teaches us how to basically budget our money. Topic. <laughs> After learning about the lessons in consumer mathematics, so guys, if you don't know yet, um, the topics under consumer mathematics, if I'm not mistaken, are simple interest, compound interest, amortization table, and stuff like that. After learning about, uh, anyway. Um, the question is, after learning about the lessons in consumer mathematics, how do you propose to manage your own finances? I think that um, I will basically apply what we learned in financial plan and like invest money into like banks and like uh, manage my own expenses so that I, I know how much I will save for like a year or two and then I should have a financial goal on like for example, my financial goal right now is like how to like earn money after graduating. I think that's it. Yeah, because that's like our one of our individual projects in math, and um, it kind of helped us also to um, know how to deal with those bad stuff because since we're only students um, and we don't really in I mean. Not really into it, yeah. So we are kind of pushed really to search about the dynamics in bands. Anyway, uh, topic. <laughs> the question is, how do you see yourself as your own finance manager after graduating from college? Um, as I've said earlier, I'm a CLA student, and it's hard for me to like deal with this math stuff because they're all numbers and I'm not mathematically inclined. So um, I know it's going to be difficult for me to be a financial manager of my own because I'm so used to like having my parents to like pay the bills and like you know like if 
there's the salary they um they usually cut off the I don't know if in the taxes they usually cut off twenty percent to pay the taxes and um after graduating we'll be doing that as well. So upon observing my parents I think I'm just gonna um ask for help of course and I think I'm gonna get used to it um in the long run. Topic. <laughs> the question is, which way of investing do you feel like doing in the next three to five years? So, cause my first choice in LaSalle, like my the first cor course, 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 <laughs> <laughs> course that I chose is um, business management or entrepreneurship. So, I'm more in the um, like small businesses. So like I'll probably start up a small business and like um, know more about how I can manage the business and like make profit out of it so that I can use it if ever um, I want to like um, open up a much bigger business and probably I'll use social media because that's um, like when you, when you, yeah and then there's a lot of um, Business is already there and it's all successful as I can see. So I'll probably try that. Yeah. Yeah, that's so it for the part one it. of our vlog, the Which mathematics is. in finance. Okay. So the next topic will, will be, be discussed, discussed by, by our friends. Thanks. Bye. Hi. So today we are at the second part of the group. This is Azal and this is Robert. And today we're going to talk about mathematics and decision sciences. So what we're going to do here is we're going to pick a letter here and we're going to choose whatever letter that we're going to answer from the following questions. So let's get right to it. So first I'm going to choose one for you. So the one that I'll get is... Okay, so what I got is D. So D is why is game three theory a relevant field? in mathematics. So, game theory is a relevant field in mathematics since it uh, deals with payoffs and uh, consequences in which you get to choose uh, which, what you want and uh, how, much, uh, how much you win or how much you lose in that given situation. So yeah, it's pretty important in which uh, it helps you make decisions. Very intelligent. <laughs> okay, so Robert. So, you got letter D. Ah, D. Okay, so what's the D? What, what are your views in learning the concepts discussed in this topic? Are the concepts too easy or too difficult to understand? Hmm, well, if you ask me in a general aspect point of view, I can say it's kind of challenging or difficult for me because like what my other groupmate said, um, CN, I'm a CLA student so I'm not really affluent in this kind of topic. However, mathematic and decision sciences, I feel like it was quite um, easy to understand. It was quite understandable since it's about making decisions with, within like social choice theory or game theory that's very relevant, relevant I mean, in the society or whenever we make decisions in the society. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, next I will choose for you. And the next one is... Okay, I got H. And H is a part of game theory. So the question is, games are described in one of our lessons. So can you describe the meaning of games in this context? I think in this context, games mean like a given situation in which you choose a year of the outcome in which there might be a certain payoff or loss or there might be a win in which you gain something so i think game is just like a situation in which you win or lose something based on your choices yeah yeah that's true yeah. okay next one is so you see we got a ah a okay um explain the relevance of social choice theory and tackling social problems hmm. okay so i guess in like a student aspect um, before I went to LaSalle, or before I even chose LaSalle, I think I can apply this with social choice theory. Like I kind of, for example, like plurality, I kind of ranked 
which schools that I wanted to go to. Like for example, first was La Salle, second was Ateneo, then was like USD, like that. So I guess that kind of made the general sense of, of where I wanted to go, particularly in terms of like school. So I guess that kind of tackled like the kind of, I guess what you can say, social problem for me as a student. So yeah. Okay, so next one I'll choose is C. So C is how useful is mathematics in decision making? It's quite useful since, as I said before, you, you'd know uh, the benefits or the, the upside or the uh, downside of your decision. So it's you just know uh, if it's a good decision or a bad decision. Yeah, yeah. Sure. The last one is. Yeah, E. Yeah. Okay, so what is it? Do you believe that voting is an effective way of making group decisions? Mm, Why? For me, I think it is. I feel like it's like kind of like the easiest way because you know, like with plurality, as even though you can put that in the aspects of like social problems, you can also put that. I mean, technically, it is for voting, so it's easy for you to rank who, which candidate was voted first or last to see and to put the votes equally and what kind of patterns did they use to like vote these people. I think it's very easy to tell where what kind of system it has. It's like an easy system basically to understand in voting. So I think it is a good way in um, making group decisions. So there, so we finished the part of mathematics and decision sciences and next we're going to talk about other student topics within mathematics but this time with all of us together. Hey guys, so today like I said we're here all together and we're going to talk about different kinds of mathematics but this time we're going to use a different game which is spin the bottle. I'm pretty sure all of you guys are aware about that. That is where you spin the bottle and wherever it hits that person is going to answer a specific kind of mathematics and yeah, let's get to it. Spin the bottle now. Spin the bottle. Spin the bottle. So question. What are your views in learning the concepts discussed in this topic? Are the concepts too easy or too difficult to understand? Okay, so first my views on this topic which is specifically coding theory and cryptology. But what I can say correlated to the second question is that it's difficult for me. As a CLA student, I believe that somehow it's not really applicable to me. So like I couldn't really comprehend why it was being taught to us. But then when it was being taught to us, I realized that it can be applicable in other sorts of life. Not technically does it have to be within your course range or wherever you're affluent in. So those are my views and what I think, whether it's difficult or not. And yes, it is difficult for me. Uh, information media such 
as communication systems and storage devices of data are not absolutely, absolutely reliable in practice because of noise or other forms of introduced interference. <laughs>
So the most important fractals is uh, one found in nature. It's because like it's uh, it's like uh, it's the only pattern you can find in nature that's uh, found everywhere. So like yeah, it's very interesting to know that there's. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, like, subscribe, whatever, do whatever, it's hang time!